Hi everybody, it's Darcy Lynn Deal from Lippy Girl Makeup and I'm here today to shoot my second video in the Cosmetic Chemistry 101 series and today what I'm going to be talking about are what are parabens. If you missed the first installment which deals with what is organic in terms of chemistry and cosmetic products, I'll put the link in the box below in case you want to watch it before or after you watch this video. So today what we're talking about are parabens, and there's a lot of information about parabens out there, so I'm really excited today to summarize all that information and present it to you and try to make sense of it for you so you can make some educated decisions on your own without being scared or forced into thinking what everybody else thinks, um, because there are definitely two sides to the paraben argument. Um, so let's get started. Um, what are parabens? Parabens are preservatives, and you probably know that if you've done a little bit of research on parabens already on your own. Um, parabens are preservatives. They're a family of preservatives, a family of chemicals that are used as preservatives. They have antibacterial and antifungal qualities, which means they prevent bacteria and fungus from growing in your cosmetics. Um, they're relatively inexpensive, and so they are used quite widely in the cosmetic industry to extend the shelf life of products. Um, in Lippy Girl Makeup, we use some natural preservatives to do the same thing. Uh, we use grape seed oil and vitamin E, um, but parabens are, are preservatives that are used and uh, they are chemically manufactured. Although they do, there are some parabens that exist naturally, like in blueberries, there's methylparaben, and I believe strawberries also have methylparaben. The parabens used in the cosmetic industry are being manufactured for the cosmetic industry. Um, the concern with parabens uh, arose in 2004 with a study that concluded that parabens were being found in breast cancer tissue. Uh, in fact, about 20, I think 20 nanograms of parabens were found in about 20 breast cancer tumors in the study, and that sparked the concern over parabens. And there's been a lot of studies since, and there's been a lot of research since. Um, it wasn't something that was taken lightly. Um, what was concluded was parabens are easily absorbed through your skin. So if parabens are in your shampoo or in your skincare products, in your cosmetics, and you put it on your skin, they are being easily absorbed into your skin. Um, the second thing that it kind of um, showed was that Paraben had estrogen mimicking qualities. So what that meant, what, what that means is paraben has a chemical structure that is similar enough to estrogens that it is sometimes mistaken by your body to be estrogen. Um, so that's where a lot of the concerns with parabens lie. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you guys a video uh, that I made on some educational software I have. Um, and I'm going to draw you guys what the parabens look like chemically. I'm going to show you what estrogen looks like chemically. I'm going to show you the concern and why um, parabens can mimic estrogen. Um, I should say it does mimic estrogen at a low level. And I'll explain that coming up right now. So here comes my video. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is draw you a paraben. In chemistry, you use this line structure, and every bend in the line represents a carbon. So I just drew in those carbons so you could see that. At the top of the paraben, what we have is a carboxyl group, and attached to that is an ester group, uh, which I called R here. And that represents any ester group. It can be a methyl group, which is one carbon, an ethyl group, which is two carbons, um, four carbons is butyl, five carbons is pencil, and it can also be a cyclical compound known as benzyl. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is draw you estrogen, and estrogen has four ring structures to it, three six carbon rings and one five carbon ring. And what you'll notice is that first carbon ring has um, the same shape as the uh, paraben and I'll just draw the paraben beside so you can see that uh, that six carbon benzyl group with a carboxyl on top and so how do these two get confused 
Well, at the cell, we have these things called receptors, which is how our cell recognizes that estrogen's in the blood. Okay, and I'll draw a paraben for you here, a little cartoon of a paraben. All right, and you can see how that could easily fit that receptor, which is meant for estrogen. Um, here's the estrogen compound. Now, even though estrogen has these other rings to it, that base uh, six carbon ring is the same in both. Now, it's not a perfect fit. Only one in 10,000 to one in 25,000 parabens will fool that receptor into thinking it's an estrogen. So hopefully what I successfully did there was compare the structure of parabens to estrogen for you and show you how at the cellular level the two are being mistaken for each other. I wanted to add that that R group on the parabens that changes, um, the longer that R group gets, the more likely your body is to mistake it for estrogen. So the longer chains are butyl and benzyl and those are higher risk parabens than shorter chains like methyl and ethyl paraben. All right, so now that we've uh, kind of established how they're being mistaken at the receptor level and also the low rate that they are being mistaken, uh, there's a 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 25,000 chance that they are being mistaken, let's talk about um, kind of the concerns there. Well, estrogen has many jobs in a woman's body and one of those jobs is at the cellular level in the breast to monitor cell division. And so what the FDA and the health authorities had to look at was what were the risks to parabens in raising the perceived level of estrogen and therefore being a contributing factor to cancer. And there was absolutely no proof that the use of parabens led to cancer or caused cancer. And that was uh, due to the fact that they found parabens and cosmetics to be at a very low concentration and also the fact that it is perceived to be estrogen at a very low rate. Uh, that does not mean the consumer does not have the choice to avoid parabens and I most certainly do myself. Um, and that's because I see breast cancer as all conditions having two kind of um, factors to it and that is genetic and environmental and a lot of us have family history of breast cancer. I know in my family we certainly have a history of breast cancer and so I like to lower the environmental factors in my life and so I do avoid, avoid parabens. One thing that's not talked about enough I think when it comes to parabens is their environmental effect and so like I said these are chemically uh, manufactured parabens and they are far beyond the concentration normally found in nature. And as we use them in our shampoos and our conditioners and our face washes and all our cosmetics, they're building up in the waterways. And that has environmental effects on animals and plants in the area. And so I just don't see a reason to use parabens. I don't see a benefit beyond um, that of the manufacturer being able to put their products on shelves for longer and do less production runs. Um, so that's kind of my stance on parabens, but I wanted to give you all the information on parabens so you can make your own decision. You can find parabens uh, or look for them on ingredients. Um, there are, like I discussed, different kinds of parabens, so they will come up as methylparaben, ethylparaben, butylparaben, isopropylparaben, benzylparaben, they're all parabens um, if you're looking for them on ingredients. Uh, next week, I'm going to do the next installment on in cosmetic chemistry, which is lead. And I'm going to be talking about that lead scare when it comes to lipsticks. Um, so I hope you tune in and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Cosmetic Chemistry 101. Thanks for watching.